Hi to you. My name is Alex and today with you I will watch Geography Now. And it will be about Germany. And my recommendation for you to prepare a cup of tea, coffee, juice or something what you like. In my situation I prepare just uh, water. <laughs> I love water. Water it is life. Subscribe today now. we will watch uh, Geography Now Germany. Yes, I'm sure it will be fun. And um, let's go! <laughs> Frankie! We have Frankie! We have guests today! Look at him! He's a gorgeous boy! Yeah? Okay, will you watch with me about Germany? Hmm? I know that in Germany people love to drink um, uh, beer, if I'm correct. What do you like to drink? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Let's start. I don't have a second headset. Sorry, Frankie. <laughs> I do not have with me any chicken. That's why he decided I will go away. Like. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. <laughs> Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Diarrhea which is worth it. I don't know. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, he always, I forget that he's always talking so fast, and I need to accept this <laughs> right now immediately at the beginning. One gummy bear? Yeah. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the yeah. final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level 1, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central... I don't know any country which has any, like, anomaly territories it's, it's always uh, kind of like wow <laughs> interesting Western europe bordered by nine other countries don't forget little luxembourg with small coasts on the north and baltic seas which they own about 50 small islands now germany like the u.s is a federal republic which has 16 wow. smaller states or bundeslander each with its own constitution bundeslander bundeslander I will try to remember. German uh, sounds pretty difficult language. Three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but Bremerhaven. they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower <laughs> Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed Fast. the Jungholz Quadrupoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Swiss Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Usedom. S more like, um, more tough. Uz, I like Z. Uzedam. Germany is interesting because okay. every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Vorpommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms. What? 300 and yes uh, it is insane <laughs> like how it's working nobody knows but um, it's quite fascinating to look um, uh, to look at the maps uh, yeah <laughs> which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes <laughs> everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game, we gotta scramble for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries at one point... Yeah, former German colonies. Germany had colonies? What? 
<laughs> Every time I, I'm asking myself, yeah. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, mm -hmm. and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land. Nazis come in, World War Two. Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany yeah. consisting of these states is today still quite different. If I will think what I know about modern Germany, it is um, maybe good, uh, how would say, good roads and good cars. It is kind of like popular everywhere. Like I think that's a very pair in roads in Germany pretty often. Uh, it seems for me so. I don't know. I never was in Germany. Like living, I mean, yes. I never lived in Germany, that's why it's difficult to tell. Uh, yeah from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky Soviet style build. Yeah, this this uh, footage reminds me somehow Russia, only buildings in better condition. That's all <laughs> difference. <laughs> yeah, everything looks neat and how it's supposed to be like but anyway, anyway, it reminds me Russia somehow. A lot of trees, yeah. It's also yeah. Buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half, and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany, only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. Mm -hmm. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla. Wow, looks nice. Pretty um, cool. It reminds me um, Empire. How he say this? Rim? Empire. Uh, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world. Wow. Wow. <laughs> The Berlin Victory Column and hundreds and hundreds yes. of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Schuckspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like French. Schuckspitze. Uh, sh sorry. <laughs> And Germany know. is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spray, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley due to its position sandwiched between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below. Germany can be an atmospheric war war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different countries. I thought that it's more about France. And uh, in post-Soviet countries too, it is popular to eat bread because, um, I don't know, maybe because of traditions. Some, I mean, not traditions, it is more... Uh, agri I don't know. Anyway, I thought that it is more like common and popular to eat bread in post-Soviet countries and in France. Yeah, Germany. I thought they like to more sausages, beers, 
and stuff like these. Kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brochen of bread. <laughs> Hast du gluten free? Nein! <laughs> Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically Nein. know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing oh brewery gosh. in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the... Wow, it looks like from uh, like from a fairy tale or like this. Like maybe it reminds me Harry Potter in some way. In the past 10 years, oh, forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one. Yeah, this one, I don't know. It is, uh, you can feel this uh, green color here. I mean, dark green color. Wow. Being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, Deer. foxes, oh. badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like mm -hmm. Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes BMW. Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Level three. And every time when he's doing videos, uh, he's preparing a lot. And he has guy, if I'm correct, if I like, who is from original German example or Japanese. If we, if this video about Japan, and it is kind of cool that his preparations worth it. I mean, it is wonderful. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identified- oh, Europe, European Union, yeah, okay, I got it as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when I'm surprised how Germany can compete with big countries like, um, I'm talking about immigration with big countries like India example, or maybe like uh, China because their population like huge. And anyway, they like on second place. Maybe they count in something like different. I don't know. It's quite interesting. Yeah, I need to look more closely about this, like try to understand this, how they count in. When it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, 
Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, mm -hmm. and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dern... Mm -hmm. Those half timber beer houses and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, yeah. some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, yeah, you would Gott. say Choose, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. Ayus. It's more easier, oh, like, than previous. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischerticketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound, however. Not this time, okay. Spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost mm -hmm. everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle Real ground Schule. type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride and unless if you're at a soccer game chances are yeah. you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting it's weird but it's kind of how things are you monster they've made great <laughs> Yo, monster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> tries to move on from the past. Nazi this. flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany. And they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech. Others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, mm -hmm. Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course... Carl Michael Schumacher. He had car accidents, if I'm correct. Yeah. American. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher. Yeah, Michael Schumacher. I remember it happened maybe a few years ago, or maybe even 10. I don't remember. I can't, like, uh, 
Okay, <laughs> I will not talk Alex about Alex von Humboldt and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 yeah. diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, even better! And Germany <laughs> is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. But very his explanations is quite understandable. Uh, even about serious topics, he can explain this pretty easy. It looks like, like, yeah. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two <laughs> have had an wife. angry start but then eventually <laughs> fell in love and went together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently and the brief time that they've been around they've kind of gone through some of the most intense world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined yet they've come <laughs> out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower you got to give it to them there's something about the germans and with that final boss level complete for me it was enjoyable to watch this video and uh, leave your comments below what do you think maybe you have something to add about germany and also maybe you visited Germany before and uh, yeah, you know something, some interesting facts about this wonderful country. Yeah, um, comments below, but at this moment I'm wishing you all of the best and uh, yeah, as always, see you next time.